It's time to ditch SMART goals. I used to be such a proponent of those very rigid evidence-based SMART goals. If you don't know what a SMART goal is, it stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound, and pretty much forever. It has been the gold standard if you want to achieve a goal. But as a financial therapist, I'm ditching them and I'm moving on to something else called fun goals. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay Bryan Podvin. I'm a certified financial therapist, licensed social worker, author of the book, The Financial Anxiety Solution, and founder of Mind Money Balance. At Mind Money Balance, I help people understand the intersection of money and mental health, aka financial wellness, so they can live a life that is best aligned with their goals and figuring out how money supports those goals and values. I said that I used to be a proponent of SMART goals because those have been the style of creating a goal that people say works best. But a couple of years ago, disability advocate Emily Lado had a post saying that smart goals were out and fun goals were in. And she defined fun goals as being flexible, uplifting, and numberless. Now, I reached out to Emily about how I should be citing her for this. She said to just link to her Instagram post, so I will make sure to link to that. I became obsessed with this idea, and it's also something that I had been weaving into my financial therapy practice with out honestly really thinking about it. I found that when we created these rigid goals, these things where you either succeeded or you failed, it created a space for a lot of black and white thinking and also feeling really badly if you didn't achieve your supposed SMART goal. Given that I'm in the financial space, I do think I have to make a little asterisk, a little change to Emily's fun goals, and I have now reframed them to be flexible, uplifting and numbers based. The way that I've kind of crafted this fun goals template is to first think of what is the cost of your goal? How long will it take you to achieve your goal? What are things you can temporarily spend less on? What are the ways in which you can temporarily earn more? Why does it matter to you? And what is the time frame flexibility that you can build in? So the numbers-based pieces of this fun goal template are the cost of the goal that you want to achieve and how many months it will take to achieve that goal. When it comes to the flexibility pieces, these are the downshifts. What are things I can temporarily spend less money on so that I can achieve my goal? Another flexible piece is what are the upshifts? The reason I say these are temporary downshifts and temporary upshifts is that in a lot of this smart goal planning and smart goal setting, we are thinking that if I make this change now, it has to be a forever change. That can be really overwhelming for us. So instead of saying, I will never order takeout again, I like to think about this as temporarily. Maybe this month I won't order takeout or maybe temporarily we'll only order takeout once a week instead of three times a week. This again gives us the ability to say this is what works for me, this is what works for us, and this is what we're doing for now. The same thing with the temporary upshifts. Maybe you don't want to have a side hustle forever and ever. I don't blame you. I think it's pretty exhausting. But if you can think of it as a temporary challenge like, ooh, I'm just going to walk my neighbor's dog and get paid for three months, that can feel more fun, it's more time limited, and you might be more likely to play around with it in that way. The uplifting piece to me is the values-based piece. Why does it matter? How will it bring you joy? How will it help you to feel safe, secure, adventurous, or whatever your values are? Why is it going to feel good to work toward and achieve that goal? And finally, the other flexible piece is a timeline flexibility plan. And what this looks like is maybe you say, I want to achieve this goal in three months, but it's okay if it takes me six months to achieve it. And what that does is to build in a buffer so that if you don't achieve that goal in three months and you would instead achieve it in four, five, or six months, you don't feel like a failure. You don't engage in that black and white, all or nothing thinking. And it allows you to say, hey, I was striving for achieving that goal at a certain amount of time. I still achieved it. It took me a little bit longer. And that's okay because life happens. So let me give you some examples of different types of finance goals that I have seen in my work, both as a facilitator and as a financial therapist, of money-related goals that could use some of this fun goal setting. Things like joining a CSA, a community-supported agriculture box over the summer. Funding a passion project, such as selling your crocheted animals. Being able to take a parent out to dinner on their birthday and pay for it. 
saving up for a weekend long wellness retreat all by yourself, leaving your responsibilities at home, upgrading a piece of technology such as a phone or a laptop, enrolling in a community class. I've seen people enroll in classes ranging from photography, cooking, to pottery, and these are other ways to enhance and enrich their lives through different sorts of outlets. Paying for children's summer camps and hiring help around the house, such as monthly cleaning or having a wash and fold laundry service come once a week. So those are examples. Another one is a vacation. (laughs) Vacations come up all the time as savings goals. I thought that I could take this idea of saving up for a vacation, put it into this template for you because you know I love learning through examples. If you are going to take this fun money template and you want to save up $2,000 to pay for a family vacation without having to put it on a credit card and finance it, and you have eight months to go until that vacation happens, you would have to save $250 a month in order to achieve that goal. Now in the smart goal setting world, you'd be doing everything in your power to make sure you adhere to that goal and adhere to that timeline. In the fun goal world, we are going to play with flexibility to make sure that you can achieve it while feeling good along the way. So let's start toward the end with what is the uplifting part of this goal? Why do you want to save up for a family vacation? Somebody might say, I need a family vacation because when we have weekends off, I'm not fully present. I'm still kind of thinking about work. Every now and then I'm responding to texts or responding to emails or scheduling emails for the next day. Very rarely, but often enough, I get calls from work and it just interrupts my ability to be fully present with my family. And I know that when I'm on vacation, I do a much better job of turning off those notifications and being fully present. Another reason that this is an uplifting or valuable goal for me is that it matters for me to share with my children and to share with my partner the value of exploring new places. Even across the US, we have regional differences, including food and music, architecture and landscapes that I want to be able to share with my family and with my kids and also learn more personally. And finally, I just want some downtime to not have to be thinking about things like laundry, cooking, or all of the logistics that go into a household. So those would be the reasons that this person says, that's why I wanna save up for it, that's why it's uplifting, and that's why it matters. So for the temporary downshifts, to spend a little bit less to save up more for this vacation, this person says, I'm gonna cut out all of the non-essential streaming services. Maybe they are a big sports fan, but the sport that they like to watch is out of season. They can cancel that streaming service for the next few months. Maybe they like to go out to eat or order takeout, and instead of doing it two or three times a week, they say, you know what, let's just do it once a week and then it can be a real treat for us and we can save that additional money. When it comes to temporary upshifts, it could be, hey, I used to love playing piano. I used to teach piano lessons when I was in college. I could totally see doing some music lessons a couple of nights a week or offering a handful of piano lessons for the next few months because it feels good to me, it feels fun to me, and I can also increase my income temporarily. Another upshift would be to make sure that whenever possible, putting their purchases on a cash back credit card or on a points-based credit card to help offset the cost of travel. It's not really earning money, but it's a great way to kind of offset the cost of travel and expenses with the caveat of you were going to pay off that credit card in full every single time and you were already going to make those purchases anyway. Now the flexibility plan is I would love to take this vacation in eight months but if it takes 10 months to save up that's okay because we'll still be in the window of time where I know I'll be able to take off work and it will still be within this calendar year and that feels really important to me and to my family to take the vacation this year. So when we put it all together this fun goal sounds like I want to save up $250 per month for the next eight months so that I can take my family on a week-long vacation. The ways that I will spend a little bit less is cutting out unnecessary streaming services and pulling back on takeout. The way that I will earn a little bit more is by teaching piano lessons and putting things on a cashback or points-based card. If it takes 10 months, that's totally fine. I'd love it if it happens in eight months, but as long as it gets done within a calendar year, I'm perfectly happy. I would love to know what you think of this approach. Does it feel good? Does it feel supportive? Or do you like the rigidity and you really like those rules? There's no one answer. Like everything that I talk about here, you get to decide what works for you and you get to toss the things that don't. With that, I'll see you in the next video.